Okay, so we spoke about figuring out the way to split the behavior of the navbar between the home page and uh, when we are in uh, an app sub page. So basically now when I'm clicking, for example, on Marek's portfolio, which usually you, we are all used to the fact that when we click here, we go to the home page. And but what it does, it kind of looks for like in here, it looks for the top of the page and it just goes there. So when we are in the app page, it kind of says like, yeah, okay, I can, I can go to the top, but you're at the top. But we don't want that behavior. We want to figure out that we're on the app mm, sub page and that means take me to the home page. And how can we do that? So I think we're starting talking about something super important when it comes to the general de development. And when it comes to Django and using PyCharm, this is something that I cannot overstate how great it is, debugging. So how to debug? Mm, whatever there is, it, you know that the code goes through and basically all those lines here, sorry. So for example, here, the code does go through this file and it does go through this file and it does go through this file. And but because we were working on certain views, we might want to use those views as a um, as the place where we debug. So let's let's start with this. I want to know how can I tap in to the request and figure out how does it know on which page does it does it reside? Where are we right now? Which URL was clicked? So what I'm gonna do and do it a lot. I'm just gonna go because it's kind of it's so short. There's nowhere I can stop. Basically, with those dots here. I can stop my code, but as you can see, I don't have much to stop. If I stop here, it's not really running the code. It's just the definition of the, the function. So it's not going to stop here. So I need to go in here and say, and by the way, I can't click here because this stupid thing is here. For some reason, it takes me to the welcome template. So I can't stop here, although I could um, normally if, if this template wasn't here. But anyway, to fix it, I'm going to just say print hello. Why not? I'm going to just stop at my print hello. i am just use it for now. So instead of going with run, I'm going to go with the debug here. Stop and rerun. So it works exactly the same. It's still working. Um, but as long as there are no dots here, you wouldn't see a difference. So if I, so the, the dots are called breakpoints. I'm going to go to the home page. Nothing happens. You can't see that we are in the debug mode. But when we go, and now I'm going to put a breakpoint here and then go to the to the air pollution app it needs to go to this function here welcome function which is our view and it needs to go through all its code which up until now was just one line but now we stopped this blue line here says we are stopped at this line so the whole memory right now the whole processing that happened before is storing the memory and now we can tap into this this data by going into the debugger Okay, so in here, we usually look at the console of the debug. So in here is a terminal, it's a different thing. But in the, we have debug, we have run, before we had run, but we finished that, that run in here. So that was the run. And that would be where you want to go if you want to see what was happening with your run before we had some get requests and so on. But now we are in the debug. And now if you scroll, it's also a test. So it's very similar to run, but also we have this tab here. So you have console and you have debug. And now this is where the magic starts. This table here shows you all the variables that we have an access to. And because we only, only have this request passed into this function, we obviously have only the, the request um, variable to, to be able to look at. But there is a lot to look at. As you can see, there is a lot of data in this one request um, structure. It's an object. And as you can see here, the path to whatever I clicked right now um, is air pollution. So basically what I'm looking for is request dot path and that will re return this string air pollution. So in here, um, I'm going to call it and I'm still stuck there so I can still kind of write my code. The Django uh, PyCharm is not going to rerun the code or whatever right now. I'm still able to do something like so let's say page or context um, page is request dot path and look at this I can do something like this select it and click on this button here evaluate the expression automatically taken to my evalu evaluator and then I just hit evaluate I made sure that this is exactly what I'm looking for close happy enough so now I'm gonna pass that as a context 
context. And now I should be able to say, okay, if the page is so and so, then do this with the navbar, and if it's something else, then do something else. Okay, so I'm gonna just run it, and in here is just like continue, resume the pro program from this break breakpoint to another one if there is any. I'm gonna delete that that line. Okay, I'm happy with this. I know I'm taking the path to this to this uh, page, and now I also have it in my context. What I have to do, I have to repeat that for every. Um, for every page. So let's go to website views and I'm gonna just add in here comma page or I can call it path but I'm gonna just st stick to page request dot path okay and now I have it in both so it's gonna be passed to the base HTML well it's it's passed to index that extends base HTML so that that's gonna be in there as well and we go to base and we will go in here marks portfolio this one here and instead of having this hash page top we want that when it when in the page is called nothing let's let's see how it looks let's go to website views and just click let's say here and go back to the main home page and let's see in here that we have if i select this and do evaluate it's just a slash so I'm gonna just write in here in so let's resume the code so it doesn't hang in there um, and in the base I will put a if statement so if page is mm, what are we looking for slash and then I always end if and if and then put something in here so if if it's a um, if it's slash then behavior is supposed to be like this but then else also we can oh we can actually do else in here that's a good idea instead of checking the, the rest else I'm gonna just paste it here take it away from here and change this to slash so that that means take me to the home page take me to the home page let's save this refresh okay I have my breakpoint here so I need to resume I took away the, the breakpoint okay refresh and now I am here I'm scrolling down I'm clicking on this and I can see something weird is happening because it doesn't scroll it just jumps and why is that base HTML uh, so pager <laughs> page save so it was the behavior for all of them was the same now I refreshed and now I'm clicking and it's scrolling up so it's using this version okay so it did find the page and it knows that it's just slash so now I'm gonna go to my app and click here and it takes me to the home page so it works the way it's, it's supposed to work and now we can fix those as well and to do that I think it would be very similar so when we have let's go here so these are the buttons so I can copy this actually this line here fits in here no problem and I think I can also so I select these and I just tap them a bit and then go here and what I'm gonna do obviously I'm gonna end if and but also in between I want to do something like hell if hell if so I want to know that there is air pollution slash slash in page okay it should know that air pollution in page that means we're in air pollution app so for now um, I suppose we can have um, something like a form at the top and then uh, below there is going to be visualization so we have just one page for it so let's copy one of the entries here copy and I'm going to paste it underneath the elif okay mm. option command L should beautify it but it doesn't do it all right okay control Z 
I don't like that. Sometimes it wraps the, the code and I don't want it to be wrapped. So I have this guy here and we have portfolio. So let's say import form, how we call it, import form, and then command D. And that's gonna be uh, maybe data table, just to have like different data table. We call it data table, and then again, command D, data visuals. Maybe we'll have more, but for now, just as a example, as an example, visuals. Okay, let's save it, and let's see the behavior. So we are on the homepage. So when I'm clicking on different buttons, it takes me to different places on homepage that that works well and then when i go here to my app i can see the import form data table and data visuals okay that doesn't take us anywhere because the the content doesn't exist yet with those ids because as you could see i was using id here as well but this works this takes us to the homepage so you now know how to change the base html that it uh, that it's uh, reacts to different pages. So it's kind of a clever way of splitting the base that is nearly always the same, but sometimes parts of it slightly differ. So then you can you can even here change bits, uh, bits and pieces. So uh, it seems to be working the way we want it to work. And we can move on to building a uh, an actual app page which as I mentioned, it's gonna be a, like a form at the beginning, and then we have a table of all the contents, and then we have, we'll be able to see some visuals with the data that we put in there. Okay, super cool. Super duper Marx company says, thank you very much, and see you in the next video.